Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the last lecture, we have seen all about how our streaming query gets executed under the hood. But now let's explore more about different data sources as well as the data sinks for our Apache Spark streaming. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so so far we have covered like the basic steps we need for expressing an end-to-end -end structured streaming application. But let's examine now how we can use the built-in streaming data sources as well as the different things that are available in Apache Spark. So as a reminder, we already know that we can create data frames from streaming sources using the read stream operation of Spark session as well as we can write that output to any other sync using the write stream operation of the data frame. So this is like this basic step that we have seen in the previous lecture. So now let's examine some of the data sources and sinks. So in this lecture, we are going to see how we can write any data from a file and how we can write it back to a directory in your local system. So that is like it will be a file as a source as well as the file as a sync. So that is going to be a very simple and quick lecture, but this is not an end to it. In the next lecture, we will see different sources like Kafka and so on. So without wasting any time, let's jump on to it. So the structured streaming will support reading and writing the data streams from the files in the same format that is supported in the batch processing. So I hope we have learned in detail what are the different file formats that are supported. So those were like the text files, CSV, JSON, Parquet, ORC and so on. So these are the formats which are again supported by the structured streaming. And in this lecture we are going to see how we can operate the structured streaming on the files. So first we need to read the data from the files. So our file will lie in some specific directory in your file system and we are going to apply some transformation to it and then we will write it back to any file location in your local system as well. So without wasting any time, let's jump on to the coding part. Okay, so this is our pretty simple and short script and you can follow along with me to get more grip on structured streaming. So what we have done is first, let's import all the packages and then the very important step is you have to provide your directories here. So here we have provided the input directory so this is the directory where your streaming query will look out for any new data which is available. So once the data is available in this file location, it will just process it in real time in micro batches and then write it back to the next one, which is like output directory. So this is the path where it stores all the output directory. So output directory will contain like the data from the final data frame that you're going to use to write it down. And then the most important thing for failure recovery. And I think we have got a clear understanding of it in the last lecture, which is like a checkpoint directory. So this directory will have all the data states commits of our application so that if our application gets terminated for whatever reasons, it will recover it in the next execution and it will not have any missing data or the duplicate records coming in the output stream. That is the power of checkpoint directory. And here, the first thing first, you have to create the Spark session. That is like the most important thing and you cannot do anything without a Spark session. So after building a Spark session and giving some app name, builder method or the get or create method, that's it. The next thing you have to do is define a schema. So you can either ask Spark to assign a schema for it by using the infer schema option and set it to true. Otherwise, you can programmatically define a schema for your data frame. But to understand this schema, you have to first see what file we are processing in this example. So as you can see, I have like the file spark course present in the G drive. So this is like the path and here are our files. So this is basically our Python script, which is processing the data. This is like the output directory, which is empty now because we haven't triggered our job. Then we have the input directory where our spark source file lies. So this is like a CSV file. So if we just open this file, as you can see, it has like four values. The first one will be like the user ID, the name, the age of that user and the number of friends that particular user has. So this is like pretty similar for from our Hadoop lecture. So we, we are going to use the same file only. So this file doesn't have any headers. So even if you give like infer schema to true, 
Spark will not understand what will be the column names because it will directly get the header and assign it to the column names, which is not an ideal way. So since this file is a headerless file, the best way to do is like infer a schema programmatically. Before moving to the code, we also have the checkpoint directory. So this is also empty because we haven't kicked off our execution and when we trigger our job, it will be like a fresh query and it will generate all the states we need for our next execution. But first, let's jump on to the code and understand how we are creating a data frame. So as you can see, we have the input data frame as an input df and we are using the read stream operation of spark session to create a data frame on top of a streaming source. So our streaming source is nothing but a file which is present as a CSV file. So we have a directory which is given as well as we have provided the schema. So as you can see, we have user ID, name, age and the number of friends. This is pretty simple. It only has four columns and we know the data types as well. So as you can see, we have given the CSV as a format, but you can try it out different files like Parquet, ORC, JSON, whatever it is. It totally depends on what data you know process. So as you can see, we have given the load method. So load will just load your data into your Spark data frame. So this is the input directory. You can explicitly pass it using the path option, but this will also be fine. You can directly use the load method to just call out your input directory. That is also fine. So once you set up your data frame, you have to do some transformation on top of it. So it could be anything. So I have not done any much more because that file is only having four columns. So I just selected name and the French column and we have just filtered it on top of age. So we are getting like the name of a user and the number of friends it the user has, but the user should have the age less than 30. It is pretty simple, so no brainer. So this is like our output data frame. You can do as many complex calculation on top of it. It totally depends on your application. This lecture is only for your basic understanding, but you have to explore more and practice on your own to make a good grip on Apache Spark. So once we done all of this, the next thing we have to do is writing the data back to the specific directory. But you have to remember some things clearly. So the first thing is like all the files must be of the same format and are expected to have same schema. So for example, like if the format is JSON, all the files must be JSON format with one JSON record per line. This is very important. So as we have given the CSV format here, so our input directory should only have all the CSV files coming in. So once we got a new data, it should be of the same format that you have explicitly given while during creating the data frame. That is very important and it makes sense as well. And also the violation of this assumption can lead to incorrect parsing and it will give us like unexpected null values, which we don't want. And also it could lead us to query failures as well. So you should avoid it at all time. The next one is like each file must appear in the directory, directory listing automatically which means as the whole file must be available at once for reading. It is not like it should have the 50% of the file. It should be like whole file should be present at once because the file cannot be updated or modified. This is because structured streaming will have to process the file when the engine finds it. So once Spark detects new files in your directory, it should start processing it in real time. And you know that Spark is very fast so your data should be available during the time of execution. And if you don't have the full file, any changes to the file will not be processed after the processing is done. That is very important to notice. Also, when there are multiple new files to process, but it can only pick up some of them in the micro batch because Spark is not like a Kafka and it will not really process the data in real time. It is nearly real time because it processes the data in micro batches. So it will just select the files with the earliest timestamp. So within the micro batch, however, there is no predefined order of reading of selected files. So all of them will be read in parallel. That is the things you want to remember when using the files as your source. So now we have discussed all about how we can read that file. 
but how about writing that file back to your file location in your local system this structure streaming will support writing streaming query output to files in the same format as it reads so here we have used the csv as our source files and that the same we have given here while writing the data back to our files directory but however it will only support the append mode because it is easy to write a new files in the output directory but it is hard to modify the existing data files this so this is like how we are writing the data back to our location so what we have done is we have used the write stream operation of the data frame so our data frame is nothing but our result data frame on which we have applied some transformation so the write stream will have the arguments like format so here the format is similar to what we have given in the input data frame so it is like csv again we have the option as path so this is like not necessary you can directly give it in the start itself and you have given the path as output directory so this output directory is nothing but where our output file will reside and also you have given the checkpoint location it is very important so i hope you already know what is checkpoint and we'll gonna see what data it generates so it is pretty straightforward file it is just picks the data from our input directory processes it it will just select the name and friends and it will give us the output in our output directory this is so simple so once we kick off this job it will create a spark session and start streaming our file in the output directory so are you ready okay then so as you can see this is our checkpoint directory which is like completely empty again we have the output directory which is again empty and we have the input directory where there is only one file which is like a csv format and you know the schema as well and this is our code so once we kick off our code so let's kick it off it will take some time to kick off the spark session it is like a one time process because once the spark session is created until and unless your job is terminated it will use the same spark session so as you can see our job is already completed it was pretty fast because it's a small file and we are not doing any complex operation here so it is already completed so if we jump back to our directories and just let's check the output directory now and there you go you have the spark metadata present here so so we'll discuss it now so the structured streaming will achieve an end to end exactly once guarantees when writing the data files and it will maintain it by using the logs of the data files that have been returned to the directory and this log is nothing but maintained in the subdirectory spark metadata so as you can see this spark metadata is nothing but the logs so this file contains all the metadata of it so any spark query on the directory will automatically use the log for reading the correct set of data files so that exactly once guarantee is maintained within your application and also you have to remember some one thing also clearly so if you change the schema of the result data frame between the restart then the output directory will have the data in multiple schemas and these schemas have to be reclined when querying the directory so this is very important so you should be very careful while changing the schema between your executions so let's get back to the output directory and this is our output file which is again present in the csv file so if you open this file that's it you have like the username and the number of friend it has and these are the users having the age less than 30 so there are quite a few so this was all about it just exit it so again we'll go to the spark course and we will go to the checkpoint directory now so in the checkpoint as you can see we got the commits we got the offset and we got the source as well as the metadata so this is very important so once you execute the file again it will not pick up that file which is already committed to the output directory this is very powerful concept and it will ensure the once only guarantees it avoids duplicates as well as missing the data in your output so this is how spark streaming will work on the files as a source as well as as the sync so next lecture we are going to see all about the apache kafka and how we can utilize it as a sync as well as the source so this is going to be very fun 
so i hope you understand it and i am going to give you all the links in the description below to the git directory where our code reside as well as the file which we are using in this lecture so if you find any errors or difficulties let me know in the comments and we can discuss it and try to solve it as soon as possible i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching